Carmites. It's episode 64. Look, we've been doing this so long that I actually um, burnt out. I used a whole lighter. When, oh, no. when does that? I know, and it's my flexible one. Don't <laughs> send me any more, though, termites. I have some. But in the meantime, I have this one. It's not as much fun, though. It's a little more. Come on. You got to squeeze really hard. <laughs> Fire. Fire. So Fire. Oh, termites. What are we drinking? A little fun. How fun is this beer from Sheboygan, Wisconsin? Vacation land. And then it's got little pictures of people skiing, a little lighthouse. I'm a sucker for the can. Yeah, Door County Brewing. Juicy IPA. And it is a juicy IPA. <laughs> Colton Wong, right front and center. Jimmy Carter and Roslyn were at the Braves game the other night. How cute is that? So I know. Great. What a wonderful um, human being. Although I heard one time that Ted Kennedy went to the White House when Jimmy Carter was president. And it was supposed to be like a Friday night cocktail party. Uh -huh. But Jimmy is a strict Southern Baptist and doesn't really drink the drink. And it was a dry meeting. And Jimmy oh. gave a lecture on the Middle East. And Ted oh. said he was ready to um, blow his brains out. And I, I totally, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not saying everything Ted Kennedy did was right. I think we all know the stories. Um, but, you know, I sympathize with him on that evening. You think you're going to a Friday night cocktail party. Bam, it's a dry lecture. <laughs> That's before bottled water, too. You had to just sit there with nothing. Your gum. If you were lucky enough to if you were lucky enough to get some gum in there. Oh, termites. That's what we're drinking. A little vacation land. What are we gonna try? What are we gonna try here, termites? Well, some interesting things. Look at this. Doing the work of the Lord. Krispy Kreme bites. Original glaze. Oh, wow. Well, and then I thought, do you heat them up? But there's nothing about heating them up on here. So here's the sad news. No high fructose corn syrup. Oh, well, then it can't be in my top <laughs> favorite foods. No artificial colors or flavors. Well, then why even exist? It's not right? <laughs> Bring a little happiness everywhere you go. Let's try one. Well, there goes my, that was the bad lighter. It doesn't matter. So they come in this little package. Mm -hmm. There's three little balls in here. But see, you gotta get them when they're hot. I don't like any Krispy Kreme donuts except the hot glaze. When the hot when the hot lights on, boom, my car turns around. These look like uh, mm, they taste wet. <laughs> I don't wet. like them. Taste wet. Yeah. <laughs> no. Your mama like them. I don't. My mama eat anything sweet. Um. Yeah, I gotta vote. No. Don't do it. Okay. Yeah. No. Wet dough. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Throw a little IPA on that. <laughs> Let's move on. Yeah. Wow, it even made the beer taste weird. Let's move on to this. Okay. Cheetos flavor shots. Flaming hot asteroids. I just wanted to see what they look like. <laughs> They're tiny little red balls. Ready? Mm. No. What? No. What? Why fuck up a Cheeto? <laughs> Why do you do this? Why do these people spend all this money investigating? You have test groups and all this shit. You can't top a Cheeto. Okay. Don't ever follow yourself if you're funny. Everybody knows that. They're okay. I mean, they don't taste like anything, though. It just tastes like chemicals, which I'm not uh, against. But they don't taste like good chemicals. All right. This is available at every grocery store. Taco Bell creamy chipotle sauce. I don't know. I'm not a big chipotle person. We'll see. I'll give it a whirl. And well, so far, two out of two suck. No. 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 That's not even. That's not even for dipping. No, what are they putting on? it looks to me like they put it in their quesadillas, oh, which is why I wouldn't get one. Ugh, oh, gross! That would dominate. Ugh, no, sorry. One thing you hate at Taco Bell. It is the only thing I hate at Taco Bell. <laughs> I like everything else. They do a wonderful job. It's not their fault. Don't blame the employees. 
All right, well, that was a hit and a miss. Okay, we're moving on. The Queens, I have no news. Well, Cher is always ra- rapid fire tweeting. Stevie, nothing. Tanya, I think she's just recovering until January. They all get back out there, I think. A lot of the um, old timers um, just wrapped it up for the. <laughs> <laughs> it's <November. laughs> they just went, well, you know, there's COVID out there and it's hard. And it's winter. And Tanya's been on the road since she was 13. Let's give her a break, shall we? Huh? And um, Shaka, Dolly, nothing. Quiet on the Western Front. So I got nothing better. But you know what I do have? Update! This is sad times. So far, this is a sad show. Not for lack of trying. I thought you could heat these Krispy Kreme bites up. I'm disappointed. Well, fuck if I know, but I, I mean, it doesn't come in the right packaging for that. They would just melt. 20 holes, five pouches. So, yeah, I will. Watch that bread get all gross. Oh, my God. Update. I told you all. I already did my update. Update. Somebody's cat just jumped off the couch. Somebody on Twitter told me that. <laughs> ABBA, you know I love ABBA, and we've talked about this termites, about how they're going to have, they built that whole facility venue for their um, show, which they won't be at. It'll be those electronic people. What are they called? Not electronic people. Avatars. Avatars. Well, it's an avatar. (laughs) Oh, Paddles. Paddles loves wordplay. (laughs) Gone. ABBA, the fabled... (laughs) Fabled. They're not fabled. They're real. International Swedish pop stars are coming um, with their first new album since 1982. Uh How long ago? I can't do that math. On November 5th, the world will hear Voyage, the opening salvo in their mega return. But aside from the two men in ABBA, does anyone care? Even the two women in the group are half-heartedly participating. They're not even doing promotion. That's because, you know what, they're in their 70s and said, look, I'll do an album, but I'm not doing press. I get it. It gets tiring. It, not tiring, but you just, you know, I still like doing it because most of the radio people are fun and print people are always it's smart yeah, and fun. it's fine. But you spend a shitload more time doing that than you do. Lewis and I always joke, we spend more time talking about ourselves and being ourselves, which is wonderful if you're a narcissist. But if you're not a narcissist, you're like, I'm sick of talking about me today. Let's talk about, uh, I always like to throw it back at reporters. So how's the weather where you're at? And then I just keep bombing them with questions. <laughs> just, just so we don't have to talk about me. Um, so, but I could see the two ladies are in their 70s going, you know what, I'll do the the music part, but I don't want to do press. All right, no problem. The public seems less than interested. I don't think press would help that, just for the record. Okay. I don't. I mean, so what? Okay, you get to see an interview with, I don't even know their names. They're very Swedish names, these ladies. ladies. Frida. <laughs> One's Frida. I know that. Frida. But I mean, the press isn't going to, that's not going to be the make it or break it thing, no. you know? The public seems less interested, especially in ABBA's new music. With uh, with all as with all legacy acts from the seventies, eighties, even nineties, they just want it, their fans just want to hear the hits, right. right? Their brains aren't wired to accept new music. Bullshit. That's bullshit. <laughs> I accept new music from old people if it's good. Right. I've never heard a shitty share album. No. Now Stevie's had some <laughs> misses. <laughs> I love the. I, who is calling from Vermont? Burlington, Vermont. Do you think it's Bernie Sanders? <laughs> it's Ben and Jerry. Ben and Jerry? Who else do I know from Vermont? Nobody. I don't even know those three people. Vermont. I'm not answering that. Sorry. It's a domestic line. Because you're busy. Well, I'm busy, but I thought maybe the, 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 the termites might want to know who, who fucking calls from Vermont. I don't know anyone there. I don't know one person, not even a comedian. I don't know one comedian from Vermont. Not one. I know one from Maine, Bob Marley, and Kelly McFarland. But I was thinking Kelly is Boston. But. Maybe she's out there. What? <laughs> Maybe she's out there. Maybe she's in Vermont. 
Um, I've done gigs there. It's an awesome little state. I have in Vermont, and I want to take that train. Ron just took the train to go see all the leaves and stuff in the East Coast. It's, I notice the older we all get, it's, <laughs> it's like we've all gone down this list, and we all go, well, fuck, I never saw the leaves in the Northeast. <laughs> like, we all just go, I got to do that, right? But I don't know, when you're younger, you just don't. But he took a train um, through the whole deal, and I want to do it. The and, but um, the problem is Ron, Ron won't know how we did it. I'll go, hey, dude, what was the name of that train? I don't know, Maddie. Well, where'd it go? From somewhere to somewhere. <laughs> was it awesome? It was. You should call Anthony. That's the guy who does this stuff. Anyway, sorry about that distraction. Um, they're saying that our brains aren't accept, wired to accept new music, and I call bullshit on that. Because if it's somebody old, Sting never disappoints. Like, there's people. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Dolly never disappoints. A, a new, well, that Christmas movie. I, I feel she got pressured. <laughs> I think Netflix, Nobody pressured. Yeah, I think Netflix was like, I don't think Dolly's ma- a movie person per se, meaning you know production and all that crap. And I think Netflix was like, here we're gonna dress you like a hobo, and she went okay, and it looked ridiculous. Like it just, you know, whatever. I just don't agree with that statement. I will accept new music from anyone. Yeah, it's not like I can only listen to Mamma Mia or I don't want to fucking hear it. That's not true. I love the people from ABBA. Sing all you want. I'll listen to all of it. So ABBA has released three failed singles since September 2nd. All duds, not only sale-wise, but on the radio and critically. They, cri- critically. they are bad records. Says who? Who wrote this article? Roger Friedman. <laughs> what do you know, Roger? Hey, I'm going to go listen to all three now. And the public has responded in kind. Here are the sales figures according to Buzz Angle Alpha Data. And then there's all the sales figures, yeah. The numbers don't uh, bode well for Voyage, even though the album is currently listed as number seven on Amazon based in advanced sales. But Voyage could have been one or two big days sales based on those sales. And then peter out quickly if, if there aren't tracks, if there aren't tracks getting attention. So far, the radio has ignored ABBA uh, songs, and with good reason. They're not nearly as charismatic as ABBA's fabled hits. Why does he keep saying fabled? They're not fabled. It was fucking real. Cussing too much. I don't know why today. (laughs) I know why. (laughs) I don't know. Which have been featured in two movie musicals, a Broadway musical, one of the only other musicals I've ever seen in my life, and I went alone. It was was great. And it made Lewis get me a good ticket because he knows those people on Broadway. And then he made the fun. Because I was in New York by myself doing a show, and I was like, I don't know. I called all my New York friends. Everybody laughed at me and hung up. No one wanted to go. <laughs> and, wow. yeah, Lewis was supposed to go because he's a sport. He'd go with me. I have to go sit, sit through some of his hard stuff. Um, but then, he I don't know, he had to work or something. He took me to the Cher musical. Yeah, he took paddles to see the Cher musical. So you see, he's a sport. He went with me to go see... Um, uh, the one of Mike Birbiglia's. He's a sport. He didn't know what it was about. I said, just come with me and shut up. Um, maybe a live... Okay. It's also quite possible this whole ABBA revival is going to be the titanic of comebacks. What the fans wanted is a tour with the original four members singing Dancing Queen. Maybe a live album would have followed. No. So far, a new album of original... I'm not buying... I'm not buying ABBA songs again. I've already bought them 10 times. I'm not doing it. If, I think I they already have live versions of it, I think. And the fake ABBA non-hologram thing, whatever it is, well, we'll see if that t- sells tickets. They may get away with it in Europe, but in the U.S., it's doubtful. I would so like Isn't that. Roger a naysayer? We'll see. He could be right. I mean, I don't know Roger, but, you know, if that thing doesn't do well, though, that's a shit ton of money. Better think is what else are we going to put in that venue? There's some promoter chomping at the bit. I can't wait till it fails. I can't <laughs> wait till it fails. I can't wait. <laughs> Update! Oh, my God. This is juicy. Okay, so how many of you went and watched The Way Down? I told you to watch it on HBO Max. Um, even Lewis watched it. 
Because I'm like, Lewis tires of the religious fanaticism so quickly that he just gets angry and turns it off. <laughs> but I'm like, no, but Lou, this one's about dieting. And he's lost weight just over time, just probably from the pandemic, he didn't drink as much. And he said, well, he's clearly getting closer to the Lord because he's lost some weight. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I don't know about that, Lou. But uh, this is breaking. Gwen Shamblin, that's the lady with the crazy hair, uh -huh. who I, I cannot believe in the whole three episodes I saw, nobody mentioned that that lady was teetering, if not full-blown anorexic. Right. Like, and her daughter. And the daughter, I know. They all kind of remind me of, um, who's the lady in the Hallmark movies? Uh, I call her Candace Creme Brulee. Candace Cameron Brulee. Candace Cameron Brulee. Because her brother is Kirk Cameron, the person who thinks the end of the world, like he's a Jesus person that says, like, left behind. Like, it's going to happen in our lifetime. Yeah. She's in, I think she's on whatever. Jen Shamblin's will... Oh, her will, potentially worth millions, leaves nothing to her remnant fellowship church. <gasps> no way. Hold on. <laughs> yep. Was her ministry about God or about Gwen? Uh, she died in a plane crash back in May. That crash also killed her husband and five leaders of, the, of her Brentwood church, the remnant fellowship. I just point out for people who don't know anything about Nashville either. Brentwood is a fancy area. Yeah. It's well-educated. It's rich. It's pricey. This lady was not scamming hillbillies yeah. in, you know, hoopy donk po donk hoop de dump All of this <laughs> is hoop de donk I don't know what I just said. Um, usually I don't film these later in the day. I usually do it in the morning after coffee. So I'm a little, eh, not loopy, just, you know, there's a lot that's happened today. <laughs> I had to pack. It always scrambles my brain to do that. I'm like, Florida. Then I'll be in, uh, you know, Canada. It's a lot of clothes. Anyway, but an exclusive News Channel 5 investigation discovered that Shamblin's last will and testament involving an estate potentially worth millions of dollars. It's not potentially. It's worth millions. I've seen, I've seen the actual charge in person. Mm -hmm. Located where it's at, the acreage, come on, is reviving all questions about her ministry and her money. It is just to me, it suggests to me, Perhaps I'm cynical. It suggests to me that the accumulation was for God, was not for God. It was for Gwen, said veteran Nashville lawyer Gary Blackburn, who sued Shamblin over allegations that her company fired people who would not join her church. News Channel 5's investigations first raised questions about Gwen Shamblin 20 years ago, but the rest of the country is getting to know her through a new HBO Max series, The Way Down, God, Greed, and the Cult of Gwen Shamblin. Yeah, 20 years ago, Channel 5, which is NBC, in Nashville, apparently, um, was pointing a little arrow at that place going, hey, man, something doesn't seem right. But guess who cared about the local news? Nobody. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Shamblin left behind a legacy stemming from her days as the founder of Way Down Workshop of, of false claims about her own wealth. This money, this is what she told Larry King. How did I never see her on Larry King? I watched every episode of Larry King ever. At least I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. Maybe not when I was working, no, yeah, but which is every night except Monday and Tuesday. Um, this money, half of it goes to the government, and the other half to keeps it keeps it going so that someone else can be helped. She told Larry King back in 1998. In 2001, uh, Channel Five pressed her on that claim. Half and half leaves nothing for Gwen Shamblin. That's not completely true, is it? Yes, she insisted. It's completely true. Yet Blackburn has succeeded in getting Shamlin to admit under earth that the money was going to her and her husband, David. That's her first husband, not Tarzan, the guy who played Tarzan, that, the, the cheesy actor oh. guy. That's the second husband. I hate to say this uh, to some degree because she's deceased, and deceased, the natural lawyer continued, but she struck me as 100% phony, as a grifter, oh. a huckster. Oh. A huckster! Oh. What about a fraudster? Oh. My favorite word. Yet... It was a story that her Elizabeth, that her daughter Elizabeth has continued to perpetuate as recently as four years ago. She practically handed mine and Michael's inheritance away. Elizabeth Shamblin, Han, oh, Han, Elizabeth Shamblin Hannah told an audience in 2017, me and Lou both said, though, um, they better figure out plan B uh, yeah. to carry on the church because Elizabeth don't have it. Whatever you got to have so to lead it, she ain't got it. Mama had it. 
mama had it, but maybe the oh no, the, the son's always kind of on the out, so it ain't gonna be the son. They need to find maybe Elizabeth can have a baby and hurry up and raise it. <laughs> <laughs> I could have done this at fifteen. Sure, I go out there. I'll doubt. What do you want yeah. me? What do you want me to say? No problem. You as News Channel 5 obtained Shamlin's will, a will that leaves everything. She left everything to her adult children. So that, so this girl's lying, first yeah. of all. Yeah. She didn't hand anything away. She gave you everything. Um, and the will, which was signed in 2011, originally left everything to David Shamlin with Elizabeth and Michael listed as successors. But the couple divorced in 2018. Tennessee, Tennessee law provides that the ex-husband was no longer eligible to be the beneficiary of the will. Right. Totally makes sense. So how much of the money was left to the remnant fellowship church, we asked, of the lawyer. I've looked at the will a couple times, and I haven't seen any. None. Wow. Now here's the yeah. remnant fellowship statement. Okay. In regards to Gwen's estate, Gwen, Michael, have, they've decided almost, uh, decided almost two decades ago to give approximately $10 million of what have, would have been Michael and Elizabeth's inheritance to the building and grounds of Remnant Fellowship Church. Oh. Gwen also donated the Way Down Ministries and its proceeds, as well as her intellectual properties over to the church. This was an incredible gift of generosity from Gwen and her family's inheritance, as the church would expect no more. It's not why, clear why the church needed to sign a mortgage for $2,341,000 in July of 2014. At the time of her death, Shamu was one-third uh, of the way through a nine-week video series on greed. Oh, meow. irony. A series in which she urged remnant followers to prepare, prepare to give up all their wealth. It was never intended to be accumulated, but rather to be used as one small tool to build up the kingdom of God. If you cling to the money, you're going to lose it. But if you give it up, you'll find it again. Ironically, in 2018, less than two months before Shamlin married Tarzan actor Joe Lara in an elaborate fellowship Remnant Fellowship Wedding, she entered into a divorce agreement with her first husband. She suddenly agreed to that settlement after David Shamlin's attorneys filed a subpoena to require Remnant Fellowship to reveal all payments and fringe benefits provided to her and Joe Lara, as well as any non-disclosure agreements that the church has signed with current or former members. So, <laughs> she all of a sudden gives David what he wants, the, uh -huh. the soon-to-be ex-husband, because he says, well, if you're not going to play my game, then you need to open the books. Right. And then she went, okay, honey, whatever you want. The divorce settlement uh, filed in court details how the couple would split 18 pieces of property. Wow. <sighs> They're now valued at over more than $20 million. She'd agreed to pay David $3 million out of her own pocket. To accumulate that much money means two things, Blackburn, the lawyer said. One is you have tremendous cash flow, and secondly, you're not contributing a whole lot of it to mission work or other work of the church. Right. Uh, right. 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 Among the properties that the woman of God got to keep in the divorce, our investigation discovered, Channel 5, was an elegant beach house in Destin, Florida, a house that a real estate listing <laughs> described as, quote, golf front living at its finest. I do love me some Destin. I do love me the panhandle. Yeah. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll look into one of these. How much did it cost? It's be. Yeah, I don't think I would have that. <laughs> For a second home. Located right on the Gulf of Mexico, Shamla's Beach Home with its four bedrooms, five baths, was located in a gated community known as Destiny by the Sea. Oh. Fabulous. Well, in 2010, it was $2 million. It's now valued at $4 million. Old real, An old real estate listing for the house boasted of its master bedroom with a gulf view with his and hers master bathrooms and a lavish library. I did see it. It's in one of her videos. She does a video from the porch. It's totally cheesy. Um, uh, yeah, that's, uh, da, da, da. oh, it's they it included in that video is a discussion of Joe Lara's love of scuba diving. This guy was the ultimate cheese whiz. I've never, yeah, back in Brentwood, the divorce settlement shows Shamlin also got to keep the couple's pre Civil War plantation home known as Ashlawn. Yes, I love it when people name their home. This is Ashlawn. named, this is named the House of Madness, House Madness. The current property value of that property, $7 million. Yep. This is what Shamlin told us in 2001 about our luxurious home and fancy cars. If it was needed, I would sell that car. I would sell that house. You didn't fucking need it to begin with. No. How about you get on my Mercury Mariner back? <laughs> hmm? Gwen, want to downsize? Mine's not for sale. 2007, runs like a charm. Not selling it. And then Channel 5 said... 
but you haven't sold the house or the car. It's not needed yet, Phil. Yeah. That's what she said. We pressed. There's yeah. nobody who could use this money. She said, no, I'm talking about this ministry, and it may happen. Believe me, that house is God's. You're just living in it. She began right after <laughs> right after her remarriage. Why did she be, she began transferring her real estate holding not into Remnant's name, but into the names of various trusts, effectively shielding the real identity of the owners. The beach home is listed at Sutton Something Ocean Trust. Ashlawn is owned by Franklin Trust, so she's hiding it all. Wow. Yeah, right. Oh, they have a lake property on Center Hill Lake. I know where that's at. Um, that's out about two hours from Nashville. Beautiful lake. That's owned by the Farm Trust. In her video about greed, she said, most of the world has abandoned true religion and are now converts to building up their own pocketbooks. Well, just replace the word pocketbooks with trust. <laughs> yeah, right. that's you, lady. She's also very, she was very, very um, set on building up her hair as high as hair can go without falling over. Yet God is a God of just justice and he will not be mocked. <gasps> oh, less than four weeks later, she would die in a plane crash. As a result, we never, we never get certain answers about how much wealth She's really accumulated about why her will fails to even mention her beloved remnant fellowship. It's your uh, karmagram. It's my karmagram. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, interesting that God's house to her is not a beautiful wife. Well, well. Yeah, she's not living in that. It, I mean, can we just say everything is God's house? I mean, if you want to <laughs> say it like that. So there you go. There's a little because there's two more episodes of that show coming, but not till 2022. Can't wait. Update. Gonna want me to. No, no, no. Stop battles. At the Elizabeth Holmes trial, oh. prosecutors prosecutors are using her words own words against her. This is great though. They plan to pay, play audio tapes for their jury of phone calls Holmes made with investors. Holmes is charged. We know what she's charged with. It doesn't matter. Um, legal analyst and former San Francisco deputy district attorney Michelle Hagan said the tapes will be damaging against the defense. The more damage the defense huff, suffers, this is key at Holmes' lengthy federal fraud trial, the more pressure Holmes will feel to testify in her own defense. Holmes has the choice of taking the witness stand after the prosecution rests its case. Her biggest decision, her decision would be the biggest gamble of her life. Well, here's what I would tell her if I was a, her attorney. Uh -huh. Here's the thing, Liz. Um, you can get on the witness stand if that's what you want to do, um, but we got to stop with the fake voice yeah. because normal people out of the gate are going to go, this well, lady's she, crazy. Yeah. Right. The minute, the minute she spoke, I was like, what? Stop it. <laughs> Hi, nope. it's me, Kathleen. <laughs> do, I seem, do I seem more powerful? No, do, I, do, I, do I seem taller and more in command? <laughs> what if I had on a turtleneck? And then, uh, yeah, you know, then I just look like a tiny round head. Yeah. I don't have the neck for it. I don't have a neck. That's a problem. <laughs> um... We know what this up. Can she win over a jury? Holmes's attorneys are defending her as a hardworking, young, and, and naive CEO who underestimated business obstacles. Oh, bullshit. Yeah, Holmes sure. dropped out of Stanford and founded. We know all that. Prosecutors have a list of nearly 200 witnesses, and the trial is expected to last through January. Aren't you happy about that, Paddles? Yeah. January. <laughs> For the first two months of the trial, they have testified that Holmes was calling the shots right. and will fully, was fully aware of what's going on. Yes. Two whistleblowers, ex Theranos lab director Ab uh, Adam so and so and so and so, um, testified that Holmes' in invention, which she proclaimed would rev rev revolutionize blood testing, was a flop. Holmes told investors and business partners that she had a vented box. We know what she said she could do. Um, uh, senior scientist Sarika, I can't say his last name it or her matter. last name. Um, no, it's a her. Testified that she met with Holmes directly on a regular basis, telling her about failures unraveling in the lab. Despite the lab's problems, Holmes pushed forward, opening wellness centers and Walgreens stores, accepting patients and wooing more wealthy investors to throw millions of dollars into her company. This is crazy. Another witness called um, former Theranos finance manager Sohan Spivey tested that Theranos was hemorrhaging money. It had net losses. Get a load of this. 11 million in 2009, 16 million in 2010, 27 million in 2011. The company went for years without having its financial statements audited, Spivey testified. 
This helped establish a motive for why Holmes would need to defraud investors. Yeah. You're out of money. (laughs) You better go trick some other old fart into giving you money. George Schultz. He was like 150. (laughs) I really couldn't believe he was still alive when they said that. Of those investors, one of those investors, this is awesome, recorded a conference call Holmes made with several of Theranos' investors in 2013. Prosecutors submitted a recording call, a recording of the call into evidence, and they plan to play it for the jury. On the call, she says the company's worth more than $7 billion. She said that in 2013. They had already lost $26 million. No, 27. I can't do that math. That's a small sum to me, though. They... They had already lost $27 million, $11 million, $16 million, whatever that adds up to. She gives a glowing financial outlook for her company's potential under her plans to open wellness centers and Walgreens and Safeway pharmacies nationwide. Oh, my God. We're working to expand that as fast as possible. The speed with which we expand is critical in the context of capturing market opportunity that we created, and we are putting a lot of resources into establishing a national footprint as fast as we can. The recorded call could help strengthen prosecutors and Prosecution's opening statement that she was a con artist who faked her way to the top to achieve wealth and fame. The case is about fraud, about lying and cheating to get money. Yep. Thank God one person recorded it. It wouldn't have been this lady because I don't know how to. (laughs) Her alleged scheme, blah, blah, blah. So... Oh, she also claimed in that call that the blood tests are highly accurate. When she knew good goddamn well they weren't. Everybody told her they weren't. There's a little update. I won't bore you with more of it. You should go listen to that um, uh, podcast if you want to about Elizabeth Holmes. If you're into it, I'm just giving you, you know. Till January? Uh, well, that's because they caught the one doing puzzles and they had to kick her out. All right. That's all my updates. But this is happening. I never say when I tape these because it's always different. I don't I can't just say what date. But this is happening today. JFK Jr. is trending. And so uh, on Twitter. JFK Jr. JFK Jr. I love him. And here's why. This I wish this was live now so you termites could go with me and go on look online what's actually truly happening. There are hundreds, and I'm going to say we're going to get to the thousands mark of people at Dealey Plaza in Dallas, Texas, also right where Kennedy came around the grassy knoll part. They're Q people. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. And they are convinced that JFK Jr. is coming back there tonight. What? <laughs> what? Now... One lady they interviewed, they think, Wait, wow. I'm not kidding. There's, it, the, it, it looks like it's lying the day Kennedy was shot. I mean, it's not as deep, but the line, I'm going to tell you what they think is happening. Okay. okay? This is why we have a mental health crisis in this country. <laughs> 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 this is why um, <laughs> m- <laughs> mental health um, help should be accessible and cheap for people who need it, so that these kind of people can get the help they need. Hundreds of QAnon fans are going to Texas to see JFK return. Seriously. And you can, there's videos all over Twitter. This is not bullshit. They're currently traveling from all across the United States where they expect to see John F. Kennedy suddenly reappear on Tuesday night. It's wow. Tuesday right now. And ordain former President Trump as the King of Kings. Now, as a Catholic... We don't read the Bible, but I think I've heard that from the Bible, right? King of Kings, isn't that something in the Bible? Yeah, it's a Christmas well, Jesus was a king of it's kings. It's a Christmas song. It's a Christmas song? Yeah. I know probably. Does Sarah McLaughlin sing it? <laughs> if not, I'm not interested. Maybe. <laughs> I like Dolly's Christmas album and Sarah McLaughlin. Wow. And, of course, Johnny Mathis in honor of my parents. Some QAnon followers were so eager to secure their place for the return. Um, on Monday night, Monday night, hundreds of them gathered in Dealey Plaza where Kennedy was shot in 1963, waiting for the latest QAnon conspiracy to come true. 
I mean, I don't understand why there's not a whole channel on this tonight. I got to find out how to watch it online. At what point will they leave? I mean, midnight? Does that mean it's Wednesday? They'll stay till sunup. They'll stay till sunup? I'm sure they will. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a Q person. Is, it, is that what? Okay. Q and I, they're promoting a very, several very different versions of conspiracy theory of what will hap- supposedly happen Tuesday night. They can't even agree on it. No, they can't even agree. <laughs> but wait. So according to Whiplash347, an account with almost a quarter of a million followers, Trump will be reinstated as the 18th president of the United States. 18th. Did you catch that? 18th. We're way beyond that. But that's because they believe that everything since 1871, the date the sovereign citizen movement claims the U.S. became a corporation, is illegal. That's what they think. Wish Whiplash 347 continues that Trump will, Trump will then step down. John F. Kennedy Jr., who those of us in touch with reality know is dead. I'll never forget when he died either, too. I was working at the Tropicana at a comedy club in Las Vegas. So it was like, you know, I'm two hours behind Central Time. And my sister calls. And it was probably 7 in the morning in Vegas. And I had two shows. And I'm sure I went out. I was sound asleep. She goes, wake up. John F. Kennedy Jr. is missing. I said, well, (laughs) I'm at the Tropicana and I don't have a car. So do you want me to help? Uh, What the fuck am I supposed to do? Turn on CNN. I said, if he's missing now, he'll be missing at 10 when I was planning on getting up. (laughs) Click. (laughs) But then my brain turned on. I'm like, wait, what? Um, So Trump will step down. John F. Kennedy Jr., who died in a plane crash, but not according to them, in 1999, well, maybe he did die, he's going to come back to life, will become president like he would if it wasn't for Killary, not Hillary, Killary plotting to kill him. Oh, oh wow. she killed him. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. You got to just go with me on this. Joining JFK Jr. as vice president will be disgraced former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn's out busy on a speaking tour making um, sure she still loads of money. Michael Flynn. At this point, Trump will ascend to become one of the new, of the seven new kings. Most likely the king of kings, which I think is, that was a, what they call Jesus. Yeah. I don't yeah. ask me about it. Yeah. Just king of I, you know, when you go in church and there's an I-N-R-I above the cross, above Jesus' head. This is how, how seriously my parents took religion. I mean, I had to go to church in Catholic school every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then we had to go on Sunday. So, whatever. But I was like, what does that mean, I-N-R-I? And my dad goes, it means I never reached Ireland. That's why he was so sad. And I believed that till I was like 15. And then I was like, well, it could mean Italy. could mean India. Lord of Lords. I like that better. Lord Lord Michael Flatley, king, king of the dance. Oh, it's Jesus. Several, it's Jesus. Several times in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. several times. Notably once well, that won't matter because I haven't read it once. All right. Hold on. Now, here's the second theory. I told you theory one. Here's theory two. Michael Brian Protzman, who runs Negative 48 Channel, has over 100,000 subscribers. Well, so what? So do I. I'm... <laughs> I mean, whoopty shit. He sees, he sees things sli- slightly differently. He has claimed that the Kennedy bu- bloodline is directly linked to Christ. He told his followers on Tuesday that JFK Sr., Jackie, and JFK Jr. will be reintroduced to the world. What? Then, the JFK Sr. will travel around for seven days, then will pass. Before he dies, JFK Sr. will transfer power to Donald J- Trump, and JFK Jr. will be Trump's vice president. Why? This is why they why should they close the Kennedy? goddamn internet. Why did they pick the Kennedy? I don't know yet. Okay. I don't know. I mean, they're liberal. Why would <laughs> so you think they'd want anything to do with Trump? I know. I don't they didn't even pick a dead conservative. Nope. <sighs> uh, this is the problem with the internet. This is the problem? Well, okay. there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, you know, I did buy some stuff on it yesterday. Yeah, um, another part of the conspiracy claims that JFK's return will coincide with the reversion to the Julian calendar, which means the date will change immediately back to October 20th. Okay, I'm f- up for that. I like that one. That's a good part of this. Let's go backwards in time. Why not? 
As ludicrous and outrageous as all these claims, it's a clear indication of the hold the QAnon conspiracy movement has over its followers and hundreds of them gathered. Hundreds of them. And, and it's gaining speed. I'm, I'm going to read you something else on Twitter. Because this is just... It would be one thing if this was just shit online. But it's actually manifesting into actual action. That's why when people say, well, words don't really do anything. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. There's enough crazy people that are receptive action. to actually get in their goddamn car Drive down there. A live video was posted on Monday by Patriot Dave. Oh, God. A QAnon supporter from Missouri. Oh, Dave. We got enough going on. Um, JFK has been a key part of the QAnon's conspiracy uh, for some time. It began in 2000. Here's how. Here's why. It began in June 2018 when someone claiming to be him Posted a message on 8chan, that board. We know about 8chan. We've yeah. talked about that. Yeah. We learned about that on here yeah. as I dumb things down because termites have jobs and children and pets and busy and I have the time. And suggested he was the person behind the movement. Last week in Vegas, two people who QAnon followers are claimed have claimed are JFK Jr. in disguise appeared on stage during the Patriot Double Down a major QAnon-focused conference. So now they're seeing people. One lady said that's there today, she's already seen Dale Earnhardt. (laughs) I swear to God. The race car car man with the mustache, yes. (laughs) I don't follow NASCAR. But I know who Dale Earnhardt is, and I know who Dale Earnhardt Jr. is. And she also claims she saw Robin Williams. And I can also tell you, Robin Williams was not a conservative. Robin Williams is not going to attend your QAnon thing. Nothing they say makes any coherent sense. This is why I don't know if, if they should help these people. They've split from reality. They've com- had a complete split. And they used to, like when we talked about the movies with the people with the multiple personalities, that's a split. You split from your reality because it's so awful. Then I would say to these people, what, what is so awful or has happened in your life that you're okay f- with splitting from reality? Just saying. Something. Um, this is another one. Um, wow. Don't, yep. Yeah. Okay, the QAnon conspiracy theory originating from anonymous user posts on right-wing message boards, uh, it it states that America is secretly being controlled by a a, 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 a Kabul of Satan-worshipping cannibal child traffickers and that Trump has been working to expose and arrest, I've heard that one, and expose the ringleaders. They think Hillary Clinton is one of them, like she eats babies or something. Um, it's, it's spawned, the QAnon has spawned, here we go, spawned extensive merchandising. Some of these people, I have seen it, real videos. They have Trump Kennedy t-shirts on. Well, that's, see, that's what I put on Twitter. If all these people are down there that gullible, why am I not down there selling merch? That's on me. I didn't know it was today. (laughs) If I knew three weeks from now, I'd get some t-shirts and I'd call one of my comedian buddies in Texas and say, hey, man, I'll give you 50%, 50% if you go down and sell this shit to these yahoos. And take video. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. But this, okay, this is what, this, that's just, in the, this is what I'm going to read you, because this is like, what, this was part of the, it's been trending all day. This is what ri- whip Whiplash, the one who's kind of in charge, this is what they think is going to happen. Trump reinstated as the 19th president. He will call up a new vice president, JFK Jr., as everything from 1871 was illegal or unconstitutional. Justice Thomas, only Supreme Court justice remaining. Missouri's finest. Trump will step down. John Jr. will become the president, like he would have if it wasn't for Hillary plotting to kill him. Then we call up Mike Flynn, right? I'm on board. Trump will become one of the new seven of kings, most likely the king of kings. But hold for it. Seven trumpets, seven presidential messages to all phones on earth. What about androids? Will I get one? 
Probably not. <laughs> it's iPhones only. I'll have to ask you. Hey, did we get a message from the King of Kings? Fuck, I didn't get one. Why not? Okay, so. And then seven kingdoms. So seven, seven, seven. I don't know what any of that means. I don't have a relationship. Clearly, they're pulling stuff from the Bible and twisting it and turning it. I'm sure trumpets are in the Bible, right? Like, angels have them, I think. Angels have, <laughs> cherubs have them a lot. Yeah. Mm. That's because they didn't have electric guitars. Um, this is crazy. This is great, though. No. Seven presidential messages to all phones on Earth. Now, if you go on Twitter right now, and I know this won't be live, but I'm just going to let you know that um, it's still trending. What happens if they, JFK Jr., let's see. What happens if he doesn't come? I know exactly what happens. <laughs> they go back to, they eight, just go back to their back message to board and look, look for another, <laughs> they go back to 8chan and go, what happened, man? I was down there like for seven hours. He'll be president because Trump will step down. But where does Trumpy go? What happens to Trumpy? Trumposaurus has to go home after all this shit? He goes to McDonald's. <laughs> he goes to McDonald's. What about, the, is Melania in on it? She quit, right? She'll go with JFK Jr. Yeah, I repost. <laughs> no shit, right? And she then, probably would like to go with JFK Jr. He's probably still hot. Right? And then they, they picked a black Supreme Court justice. A black she, Supreme Yeah, but he's conservative, so they don't care. Yeah, he totally gets a pass. What about all those Confederate flags? That's all right. He doesn't mind? They're fine with that if he's conservative. (laughs) I don't care. None of this makes sense. I'm just saying for the next podcast, because I'm going to read, I'm going to follow up on this because I know everybody else has things going on and I really don't. I'm going to follow up. What is your bullshit answer? These people are physically there. They're buying merchandise. I mean, they have coolers. One well, lady's been down there for hours. I saw her interview. That's one who said she saw Dale Earnhardt. A lot of dead celebrities are coming. A lot. Dale Earnhardt, Robin Williams. But the B-level ones. <laughs> How dare you call Dale Earnhardt a B-level celebrity? He is not anybody that you should call Dale Earnhardt. And so's your friend. You don't know That's shit true. about NASCAR to be spouting know. off <laughs> shit like this. <laughs> One of the greatest jokes of my friend Vic Henley, who I always talk about, who um, is no longer <laughs> with us, he goes, I love it when uh, NASCAR people call in to uh, argue things on sports talk radio. Because I'll go, okay, let's go to the caller. Caller, you there? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> they just yell out the guy's number. <laughs> That's all. Goodbye. Hey! That was really loud. Okay. okay. Well, Moving on. Crazy. I'm just going to tell you guys, though, don't worry. Mama Termon is on it. I'm going to follow up, and I want to hear every dumbass explanation of why it didn't happen. Okay. Maybe JFK couldn't make it back from the dead today, although it is today the day of the dead. <gasps> is that why they picked that? <gasps> oh. I thought it was November 1st. All Saints Day is November 1st, for sure. But I don't know if day of the dead. November 2nd? It ends today. It was yesterday. And it ends today. It goes from yesterday to today. Well, well, maybe that's why then. Okay. I never do. I rarely do celebrity gossip stories unless there's like something else wrong. Like Brittany, you know, that was like something else is wrong. How is your friend Brittany? Um, I haven't heard about my friend Brittany in a while. I haven't checked her Instagram. I think she's fine. She's freeing herself. She's fine. I'll let the term. Well, maybe the termites know more than I do. I don't know. I don't really do celebrity um, gossip or anything, but I can't wait for this book to come out because, as we've discussed, who's my favorite actor in the whole world? Brian Cox from Scotland. Um, I just think he's a wonderful actor. In fact, well, he's written a memoir. Won't be available in the United States till January, but listen to some of the shit he says. I love it. I love it when old people just rip the rip the barriers down and go, I'm going to say whatever I want, and I don't give a shit. Yeah. It's called putting that rabbit in the hat. He criticizes a list of fellow actors, but he compliments some. 
even-handed. Um, from Johnny Depp to Michael Caine. Yes, right now he's playing Logan Roy in Succession. We all know that. I'm watching that. He's worked with a variety of da, 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 but here, uh, it's an autobiography that looks back on his life, his tumultuous childhood in Scotland, to becoming a successful actor. But amid his life story, Koski has plenty of commentary on others in the industry and doesn't pull any punches. This is so crazy. Um, this is what he says about Johnny Depp. Personally, though I'm sure he is, though I'm sure, Personally, though, I'm sure he is. He's so overblown. This is about Johnny Depp. So overrated. I mean, Edward Scissors hands. Let's face it. If you come on with hands like that and pale, scarred face makeup, you don't have to do anything. And he didn't. <gasps> and subsequently, he's done even less. Wow. Cox has not worked with Depp and turned down a role in Pirates of the Caribbean. He also comments on the work he, the actor he worked with, Edward, Edward Norton. The two starred in Spike Lee's 2002 film, 25th Hour. I never saw it. He's a nice lad, but a bit of a pain in the ass because he fancies himself a, as a writer-director. I'm sure those people are pains in the ass. Just pick one. Please be it. Thank you. As for Michael Caine, he gets a backhanded compliment from Cox. I wouldn't describe Michael as my favorite actor. But he's Michael Caine, an institution, and being an institution will always be having range. Oh, oh! He also s- describes Steven S- Steven Seagal as ludicrous in real life as he appears on the screen. Quentin Tarantino, um, Brian walked out of Pulp Fiction. He walked out. He did have some nice things to say, though. Um, I don't, I know I saw Pulp Fiction, but I don't really remember it. Just so, I remember them beating somebody in a chair. That's all I remember. Um, he's very kind about, um, Alan Rickman. Yep. He's one of the, isn't he the guy in the Harry Potter movies? Yeah. I only saw one of them because I had to. Because I took the, my nephews. Um. He said he's one of the sweetest, kindest, and nicest, and most incredibly smart men I've ever met. On Morgan Friedman, who he worked with in 1966 Chain Reaction, he said, I'm pleased to say that although he was cold and pissed off and watching bedlam rain around him, Morgan Friedman remained an absolute gentleman, being the very epitome of Morgan Freeman, the Morgan Freeman you would hope to meet, the Morgan Freeman you encounter in your dreams. Wow. He also praises Scarlett Johansson. They both had roles in Matchpoint and Her, writing that she is divine, funny, smart, and wonderful. Divine. Yeah, divine. Um, he said that Spike Lee is simply one of the best directors. His knowledge of cinema is second to none. What's more, I've never known a director to be so um, diplomatic. Nice. He knows some people will be upset by the book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I get, but a lot of people are going to go, I don't care what he has to say he's 75 and but i'd care because i think he's smart he knows that his comments will not go over well he told the big issue i'm expecting probably to never hear from some people again but that's the way it goes (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) Um, he asked if it was um cathartic you know Mm -hmm. he said just tell the truth shoot the devil it was cathartic, necessary. It was important for me because I've reached a certain age. I wanted to look into certain things in the light of one's experience and be as truthful as I could be. Well, good. He certainly doesn't waste your time. Yeah. yeah. Go for you. As, what does Rocky Laporte say? Go for you, Brian. Go for you, Brian. Go for you. Yeah. All right. Let me see what I got next. I have so many things. No, he'll be the 19th president. Pay attention, Paddles. The first 18 were legitimate. God damn. If you can't keep up, we're not going to the rally. I'm going to take your Trump, I'm going to take your Trump (laughs) Kennedy t-shirt that I've secured online, and you're not going to get it. We're going to be real goddamn late. (laughs) You know what? There'll still be some dipshits wandering around down there. All right, this is an interesting thought because I believe it happens this week. Um, I don't know when you, by the time you guys hear it, I think we'll just have done this, but it's moving the clocks. 
This is an interesting thought. Here's the problem for Mama Termite. It involves math, and I don't really understand what he's saying, but I'm going to tell you, this author, Andreas Kluth. It's from Technologies and Idea. Okay. He wants to get her, not rid of just daylight savings time, but he wants to get rid of time zones. Now that's where I get confused. So we're just going to go back to four clocks at all, like back in the medieval times? Meet me when the sun's above the barn right. type shit? Yeah. Here's what he says. You got to hear him out. He's okay. clearly smarter, way smarter than I am. This is one of those weeks when sitting here in Berlin, I feel much closer to my place of birth, New York. By one hour, to be precise, most of the U.S. switched to daylight saving times last weekend, whereas Germany, the first country to introduce summertime about a century ago, will spring forward next Sunday. Because we didn't used to have these things. It was about farming, I think. Yeah, it was about farming. As a general rule, nothing that was originally proposed by Benjamin Franklin should be dismissed as self-evidently daft. Correct. He was a genius, like him or not. As um, the crafty founding father surmised a change in the clock twice a year might nudge people to rise and go to bed earlier in the summer, thus saving candle wax. Look at him being a conservation yeah, guy. Exactly. But wax doesn't go for you, Ben. Yeah. But wax doesn't cost that much. That probably seemed sensible at the time, right? Nonetheless, daylight saving times is an idea whose time has passed. The resetting of a clock messes up our body rhythms and creates health problems. Well, it depends on how much you drank the night before and if we're springing forward or backwards. Because if you drank, you're super happy to get that extra hour, and I think it's healthy because you got an extra hour yeah. if you drank. I don't know about what happens if you don't. For school children in particular, it causes a mild form of jet lag, but without the excitement of travel. But for, <laughs> I feel sorry for the kids I see at the bus stop in the dark, and then people wonder yeah. why these kids snap. Here's why they snap. I'd snap. It's flipping cold. I'm standing out here waiting on a bus. It's dark. I could be kidnapped. I could be hit by a car. I almost hit one. There was no light. The kids just standing like, yeah, yeah it was da- it's dangerous, too. I don't know. Those backpacks are heavy. Those backpacks are heavy. I lifted yes. up my nephews and almost slipped a disc. I'm like, Jesus, why? Well, I don't even want to know what's in there. It's not on me. It's on my sister. But I'd like to go one step further in proposing getting rid of time zones all the together. I'm hardly the first person to make this suggestion. The argument has been por- put forth sporadically for over about half a century. Really? I never heard of that. That's about a third of time we've had time zones, incidentally. Hmm. To see how arbitrary and squiggly lines are, join me on a jaunt through history. For most of our evolution, we followed natural time. We generally rose with the sun, which stirred us with blue wavelengths of morning, then got drowsy with the redder hues of dusk before sleeping soundly exactly when we should. I don't disagree with that. Okay. Um, although, in the super hot countries, I'm all about this siesta. I think a good nap really can really make a great day. And well, and all comedians are nappers because yeah. we have to get up early a lot of times and do all the press and all that. And then we wander around and do dumb shit. And then about, you know, you know, you got to stay up till midnight or one. So you got to get a pre-show nap time. Everybody knows don't call during nap time. And that's anywhere from four to six. Right. Don't call any comedian during that time. Well, I don't know. The go-getters are probably up. <laughs> But me and my friends, that so. that is like a... Um, then technology and globalization threw um, a spanner, I don't know what that is, into this harmony. And this is when it happened. In the mid-19th century, each town and hamlet kept its own local time based on a sundial. Okay, well, we can't do that. But railroads started sundial. carrying folks around faster than their ancestors could have imagined, and the telegraphs magically connected them across continents. People suddenly needed standardized schedules to catch a train or get a message. Right, we need a schedule. We're global. You know, we can't just... uh, (laughs) Or we all have to stop traveling and live in a town with a sundial. That's fine. In 1884, some countries therefore agreed on international time zones. The prime meridian was defined... 
as running through a measuring as a measuring device in the Royal Observatory in Greenwich in London. The rest of the world was divided into strips of 15 degrees longitude in width and nearly adding up to 24 zones, one for each hour of the day. Wow, I would have flunked doing that. <laughs> Kathleen, uh, I'm going to need you to divide this by longitude <laughs> and latitude. Is it lunchtime? Yeah. Um, you know what? I'd love to help you, but it's my nap time. <laughs> Um, once the system was devised, politicians everywhere started messing with it. The French, being French, oh, look at him getting a little slam. <laughs> the French, being French for years, refuses to accept anything British as the standard. True. Of course they do. In the decentralized United States, timekeeping refrained, remained a free-for-all until Congress attempted to impose the Standard Time of Act of 1918. The quest is still ongoing. Countries are still switching time zones now and then. Well, we're, we're switching it in certain states. Some right. states don't even play. Nope. Arizona, and I think Indiana, I, I mean, yeah. it was in the past, where they go, oh, we don't do that. Try to get to a show one time when you don't know what fucking time it is. Right. Especially Arizona, because, like, I was working in, <sighs> nobody cares, but Laughlin, which is in Nevada, but the show was across the river, the Colorado River in Arizona, and then I thought it was a certain time, and they go, oh, they don't even do that, and whatever. <laughs> Somebody just come get me then. I'm never a diva, but if I don't know what goddamn time it is, yeah. then I'm just going to stand here until someone goes. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? Because I don't like to be late. Catholic up. school rule follower. <laughs> Elsewhere, countries kept bending the meridians to suit their ideologies. In recent years, North Korea shifted its time zone by a half hour just because it could. Kim Jong got bored. Before moving it back again to align with South Korea when relations thawed, idiosyncratic places like Nepal diverge by quarter-hour increments. Russia has 11 time zones. Texas has three, I think. I think you move. Go giggle that. I think Texas has. I know Texas has two for sure, maybe three, because I've driven through it and went, I changed time zones and I'm still in the state, in the same state. Two. Two. Okay. Yeah. China which should have five, only has one. Politics isn't the only thing that exposes the system is intrinsically silly. If you ever visit the right spot in America and stretch out your sleeping bag, you'll be in different time zones simultaneously. What will that cause jet lag? Besides being inane, the convention is also bad for us because it messes with our biological clocks. People who live on the eastern edge of time zone get their, car, uh, their rhythms and health thrown out of whack. Yeah, especially if you stay up for Monday Night Football. I don't know how people live on the East Coast and watch sports. I really don't. Baseball playoffs, all that shit. It goes to like one in the morning if there's overtime and this and that. And they all have to get up and go to work at the same time as Midwest people or California people. I don't, yeah. The whole notion of time zones rests on a fundamental delusion. It suggests that a number, this is where I don't know what he's talking about, <laughs> okay. 7, 12, or 21 should tell us when to get up, eat lunch, or go to bed. We should be instead taking orders from the interplay of planetary rotation and rhythm, circadian rhythm. Hence, the, yeah, he'll fit. this is a very Germanic yeah. way of thinking. Hence the idea of transitioning to a simpler but superior system. It would combine one global time with seven billion individual and biological times, several billion individual and bio. I don't know. Single global time is necessary because of the railways and telegraphs in the 19th century, blah, blah, blah. That's why pilots who'd rather not crash into multinational airspace already use something, something time zone. We should all use the UTC. Initially, this would be weird, even hilarious. New Yorkers would have to get used to having breakfast when the clock seems to say noon. But we'd quickly sort it out. Yeah, it got harder than I thought. Yeah, we're not doing it. All right, I'm done. But I'm all about why I think we could get rid of daylight savings time. Or, you know what? This is why I'm a compromiser as a Libra. Let's make it a half hour. Oh, I'm no. trying to meet people in the middle. My mom always thinks I'm a half hour off. She's a half hour off, just in general. I'd be in California. What time is it out there? It's 6.30 here. And then I'd go, that's weird. It's uh, 4 here. Hmm. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I never did the right amount. And she just would be like, that's really weird, Kathleen. 
All right, here's a little something. See if you'd bite on this. I would do it. A thousand Andy Warhol sketches will be sold for 200. Hold on. Don't go no way. A thousand Andy Warhol sketches will be sold for $250 each. The catch? 999 are forgeries. But they're so good, you can't really tell by the naked eye. This is the same company ma that made little Nas's Satan shoes. They're known for coming up with cool idea. Well, you know, depending on how you view it. Let's just say news splashy ideas, shall we say. Uh, only one is real. This is the latest artistic concept by the released by Brooklyn based collective Mischief, but it's M S C H F. Uh, mischief. Known for its provocative and viral creations. The particular exhibition is called the Museum of Forgeries and based on a sketch done by Andy Warhol titled Fairies. It consists of three nude fairies playing with a jump rope. And it was sold by Christie's in April of 2016 for $8,125. I'm surprised you could buy an Andy Warhol for $8,125. I mean, it's just a sketch. But still, the sketch is now approximately worth $20,000 according to the uh, Chief Revenue Officer of Mischief. That means one lucky person will make $19,750, while the other 909 will get a pretty decent forgery. However, the real winner will be Mischief. They sell all the, if they sell all the paintings, they'll bring in about $250,000 worth of revenue. Right. Yeah. Despite having... Um, Do you find out if yours is real? Um, I don't know. Hold Later. on. They hope it'll make a splash by pointing out the pretentiousness of art collectors. That's what I'm always into, too. And the arbitrary value of great works of art. Ubiquity is the darkness in which um, novelty and the avant-garde die their truest deaths. More than slash canvas or burn pages, democratization of, ex of access or ownership destroys any work premised on exclusivity. Wow. That's quite a sentence. That hurt my head. <laughs> Um, I mean, I guess they'll tell you. It just, it doesn't say in the article. Yeah, I guess the person, you'll be notified. I'll just say that on behalf of mischief. It doesn't say that in the article. You'll be notified. <laughs> a little, wouldn't that be great? How great would that be? You should go work for these people. That's a great idea. If you win it. Little Nas will call you, <laughs> and he'll use his Satan voice, yeah. whatever that is. I just made that up. I don't even know if he has one. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish with this because this is un, flipping, believable. Hello, Ask Paddles. Hmm? Hello. Hello, Paddles. Hello. 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 Thank you for your ghosting. Mid-mid-mid-mid. <sighs> the super rich. I'm always fascinated. And I don't even want to be one. I, would, I don't have the bandwidth to know what to do with the money. I don't want to have meetings about money. I don't care enough. But I'm fascinated with what they do with it. <laughs> well, I mean, I want to make a nice living. But I don't want to... I don't want people with billions of dollars, even multi-multi-millions. Mm -hmm. Something always goes wrong. Yeah. And, like, I don't have any kids, but you know that every niece and nephew, if I... If I had multi, multi millions of dollars, they'd all think they were getting it. And then they'd become lazy little rats, lazy little bums. And they would just sit around, drink beer, waiting for me to die. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Lazy rats. They'd become, I would become Arthur. So that's the first problem. <laughs> Take me to the park, Benjamin. <laughs> One more time. All right. The super rich are forming a new exclusive club. For $180,000, a three-year member includes investment opportunities, access to West Point generals, confidential support groups, and private getaways. Listen to the shit they are selling these people, and these people are all in on it. it this is clearly new money people, because everything I'm going to tell you, old money people already know how to do. They've known how to do it for years. There's, this, there's a running system. You just walk right into it. This is like, I actually know people. <clears throat> Who would fall for this? Ahem. Yes, I do. They fall for it on a smaller level, but given the opportunity, they would totally do this. Okay. To show how exclusive you are, there's nothing like turning away a billionaire. Two members of the Three Comma Club, 
That's what they're calling the 180,000. I don't know. The three comma club were were among those nominated to join R360, a new invitation-only investment networking group for people with a net worth of $100 million or more. Neither billionaire made it past the membership committee, so they're already doing the Barry, Barry Madoff thing. Right. We, we don't take everybody. Okay? <laughs> Sorry. Um, according to the group. But see, this is the bullshit thing. Someone's printing this. Neither billionaire made it past the membership committee. Says who? Says Charles Garcia, one of the group's managing partners. So you just create that story. Right. You just make that up. Right. There's nobody that, no, yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> I took some grief for that, the 60-year-old entrepreneur, a consummate networker who founded Sterling Financial Investment Group in the late 90s and chaired Florida, South Florida's chapters of wealth network Tiger 21 for many years. One person seemed to want to leverage a group to benefit their own business activities and the other one didn't want to integrate his family. How creepy. Yeah. The whole family's got to get in on your weirdness? <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Neither of those are in line with the values considered to the core group. Members with those values, which include honor, entrepreneurial grit, I have none. I would, they'd go, what do you, what, on a scale of one to ten, Kathleen, how's your entrepreneurial grit? I'd give myself a half point. <laughs> I have good ideas. I just can't implement it. You have a good idea. We have a little Nas call the winner of the Andy Warhol deal. Okay, on that, as soon as we're done. Send them that for free. <laughs> as soon as um, uh, and generosity of spirit. Well, I have that, but I don't need anybody to teach me how to do that. You're invited to go on a three-year journey to gain mastery across six kinds of capital, financial, intellectual, spiritual, Okay, if you don't have your intellectual shit together by the time you have all this money, then you're just a, a walking moron who got lucky. Good for, you. Good for you. Spiritual, if you don't know what you're doing by the time you have all this money. Human and emotional and social. A three-year family membership costs $180,000. There are countless formal and informal networks for wealthy individuals and families, but R360 aims to find a place among them. Tiger 21, perhaps the most widely known group, never heard of it, has nearly a thousand members paying dues of thirty grand a year. You should, I think there's a lot of people that just want the financial. It's all bullshit. You already know what stocks are being sold. It's all insider trading. Tiger Twenty One, got it. Um, when people get wealth of a hundred million or more, their issues are far greater yeah. than for people who are wealthy but not at that level. I think poor people's issues are a lot greater. If you're sitting in a double wide and you don't you know you don't have your pad payment for August, you're fucked. What's a pad payment? You got rent. Sure the mobile home sits on a pad. You rent yes, you rent your area. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Oh my God. Well, I gotta talk about that after. Uh, I'll explain mobile <laughs> home living next episode. <laughs> 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 We yeah, lived at one for a while while our house was being built on top of a top of a hill. We lived it, and it, it was, <laughs> but I don't know why my mom and dad, like, they always <laughs> called it the fuck wah because it was like F-O-Q-U-A-T. It was some brand, uh-huh. but my parents, my parents would go, oh, darling, tell your friends we're living in a fuck wah. And I'm like, oh, that's my sister. I can't talk to you right now. Kit, uh, Kit, Kit, did you make it? Christ Almighty! You're not gonna let me finish this story. I'm sorry. <laughs> These people have achieved success and are looking more at how I can make an impact on things that matter to me, for myself, my family, for society. Well, if you're, if you are you spiritual, what church do you belong to? Walk, walk on down there, plop a million, million. Don't talk to the king of kings. On their right, <laughs> there are philanthropic networks such as the invite-only Synergist Global Philanthropy Philanthropy Circle founded by Peggy Delaney and her late father, David Rockefeller, with more than 100 family members around the world. Like R360, Gia describes membership as a journey, a a a long cycle of inspiring, engaging, and connecting philanthropists and social investors to create a better world. Dues are $25,000 a year. These independent groups are in addition to those formed by private banks. 
and high-end wealth management firms, which pour resources into building networks designed to connect, educate, entertain, and retain their ultra-wealthy clients and their children. It's word salad. It's word salad. You're really paying to get insider tra- information. Go buy a thousand shares of hoop de doo because schmoop de doo selling it. All right, thanks. Um, but wait, there's there's just a really good details. Hold on, I don't need to. That's all kind of boring. But there's a pad payment. <laughs> Google it. I did. Did it come up? Um, no. Mobile home pad payment. Pad. You rent your pad. <sighs> Hold on. I want to tell you what they also do. <laughs> Launch pad payment. <laughs> Launch pad payment. Um, uh, hold on. Uh, bu- 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 okay, okay. Here's what some of the things you can do. In July, about 30 members went on a four-day retreat on Rins- Richard Branson's private Nectar Island. There, uh, Cole, whomever that is, led a talk with Branson. So now you're in a tiny TED Talk that you can't leave. <laughs> Fuck me. On an island, all I want to do is sit around and go swimming or yeah. snorkeling. I don't want to sit at some talk. Other speakers included Harvard professor David Sinclair, author of Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. Yeah, we do, David. Everybody's going to die. Stop it. And James Dotty, a Stanford University School of Medicine neurosurgeon who founded the Center for Compassion and Altruism Research and Education at the school. Hey, you know what? We're on a private island, and it's gorgeous. You know what I can't wait to do? I'm going to get a mimosa, and I can't wait to hear a Stanford University School of Medicine neuros... What? Buzzkill. Oh, members also play tennis with Branson. Okay, I would do that. And visited parts of the island that are home to threatened species, such as ring-tailed lemurs from Madagascar. An upcoming visit to West Point, these are the places they'll take you if you join the club, will feature generals talking about leadership. (laughs) (laughs) Boring. Thank you for your service. With our 360 members and their adult offspring. Yeah, like their cats. The trip also includes a chance to do an obstacle course. You go to the shooting range and attend a football game. Get this is the kicker though. This is one is like ah. members who want to show heirs where their wealth came from can work with R three sixties full time filmmaker. Yeah. To produce a movie quality documentary about their life. Yeah. yeah. As well as have a hundred and fifty to two hundred pay hardcover memoir written. If you're gonna be a good steward of wealth, you need to figure out how to influence generations you're never gonna meet, Garcia said. It is baby narcissist. Uh-uh. What is your life purpose? What are you going to do to change the world, Garcia said. Oh, my I'm God. Bring back Kennedy. Eleven members attended the Women's Committee kickoff meeting where they talked about the mental health, tel- health toll of COVID. Well, that's on you. I had a wonderful time. <laughs> oh. For people who didn't have to do nothing, if, you can't, if you're bored, that's on you. Navigating relationships with children in divorced families and how to deal with earning more than your partner. As a woman, as a woman, if you earn more than him, that's what they're implying, he might feel a little bad about it. People were bringing up that feeling of being hypersensitive to whether your spouse is feeling emasculated. See? Feeling like they don't have a say in the marriage because you have more power. She experienced this with her first husband. Members, and they also shared advice on commingling assets, recommending that couples contribute a shared amount in the amount based on a percentage of what each person owns. Sometimes, I'll be really honest, even having conversations with people on the subject matter, when you see strife in the world, people will take out a tiny violin. You say, what are my wealthy person person's problems? But they do exist. <laughs> oh you know, this is- Why am I not doing this, though? I sit here and make fun of it. But see, I can't start it because I, I don't come from, you know, the Vanderbilts or the Rockefellers or some money, money family. That's why the people won't listen to you. No, not these rich people. You're They're not going to listen to Jokey the Clown. No. They're going to go, um, ooh, she's an entertainer. <laughs> why don't you do it for people who have $100 in their checking account? 
Yeah, I should do it for people with yeah. that. If you can prove to me you have $150 saved, yep. we're going to have meetings. We're going to talk about how we're going to spend it. <laughs> we're going to start with, do you have a DraftKings account? Do you know how to gamble? It's Monday Night Football. Who do you think is going to score? All right, termites. My fantasy football team is okay. I'm in the middle of the pack. Lewis has fallen all the way to the basement, and today he wouldn't even pick up the phone. I think he's in mourning. <laughs> yep. He's yeah, I think he's sad, sad, sad clown. Um, it's fine. I don't know what's happened to the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes is out there throwing like he has an arm disease. <laughs> It's like his arm isn't connected right anymore. It just goes. <laughs> I feel very bad for Derek Henry. He'll be out for the rest of the season at times. And you know what? That was going to happen because why the Titans? You can't run Derek every play and expect him not to get hurt eventually. Just saying. That's on you, Titanians. Um, and that's it, termites. I really have nothing else except if you haven't, you should go on Instagram or Twitter and look at the picture of the buck that was out in my back slash front yard, whatever you want to call it. It's amazing. It's the biggest one I've ever seen on the property. It may be the biggest one I've ever seen in my life, in, in real life. Yeah. I'm still watching Succession, and um, I'm still watching The Morning Show with Jennifer Aniston and Hoop to do like Steve Carell. I like Reese Witherspoon and anything. Oh, Jennifer's okay. Steve's a little over the top in this one. I usually like him, but it's fun. It's entertaining. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm racing home from the road because I'm going to where? By the time you hear this, I'll be done with one week in Florida, then Arizona, and then back to Florida. And Newark, I'm going up that way. Aspen, going there. December is Newark. Two shows. Parks Casino. And, you know, hoop to hoo la de la Hopefully the airlines will be functioning and I will get to where I need to be. But usually I'm on Delta, and usually that's fine. Shout out to Delta. Shout out to Delta every day of my life. Yeah. Every day of my life. Sure, there's been problems here and there, but there's always going to be that. But not like what's going on with some other airlines that, you know, you don't need to mention, but I will. American, Southwest. <laughs> the fuck, guys. Yeah. I mean, I get it. I actually found a really good article. I didn't bring it up to explain what exactly is going on. Because every day they blame it on something else. And then people who don't travel that, well, people who don't travel that probably don't care. But they probably don't understand, well, what is the truth? Is it they don't want to get COVID vax? Is it you didn't hire enough people after you laid everybody off? Now you got to go. I mean, help wanted pilots? Dude, you can't. Right. right. You, oh, why don't you throw that up there on uh, Craigslist? Hey, man, uh, I, I haven't really flown a plane, but uh, <laughs> I drove a boat really fast once when I was like 12. I'm in. <laughs> God. Um, all right, termites, that's it. Be good termites. Be worthy termites. Get, get, your, turkey. get your turkey and get all your stuff fast because I think it's going to be weird. Yeah. Like, I already got a bunch of dill for my dip. Dill? and I got, Yeah, and I got sage and I got Beaumont to meet my mom's dressing because I think, you know, Shit's getting weird out there. You should make some uh, videos to teach you to cook like Jennifer Aniston. I don't really cook. I just make my mom's dressing. You make dips. I do make dip. Your dips are good. I'll do a dip. It's easy. All right, that's it. Night-night, Tom Rots. <laughs>